Hello everyone! Welcome to day, I don't even know, of lockdown lunch with me, Kelly Ransom, and my friends. Um, I'm very excited about today's show. Hold on, I'm just pulling it up on my phone. Very excited about today's show. We have our first male guest today. I'm <laughs> honored. Welcome everyone who's watching now or watching later um, to today and <laughs> to meet Connor Denahan. He works Denahan. Yep, you got it. Yeah. Um, he works at Deacon Giles Distillery in Salem, Massachusetts, and today we're going to talk about awesome stuff like booze. And uh, most importantly, though, Connor, what day is it? <sighs> I lost count, <clears throat> like, sometime in the first week of March. I don't even know. I think we're in April right now. Uh, in April. Yeah, we're in April, so, like, like a month. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Fun plus. It's Friday, though, right? Yes, it's Friday. It's always Friday. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's always Friday. It's always the weekend. Um, For you... And for my husband, but not for me. <laughs> I'm very excited that it's Friday. <laughs> um, are you eating any lunch today? Are you, are you having? What are you having for lunch? Uh, well, I actually just woke up because you know it's Friday, so I'm oh, having so some breakfast. water. Having some water right now. Uh, <laughs> for lunch, you know, maybe make myself something fancy like a grilled cheese. Ooh. <laughs> maybe a big old glass of wine. That looks pretty tasty. It's right. a. Dr. Pepper cream soda. Thank you to my dad. <laughs> that does sound pretty good. I was drinking on some uh, Polar Birch beer the other day. That was delicious. Mm. I, I, need to, I need to keep myself um, tamed and not drink before 5 p.m. That's the rule I've set. It's so. easy if you don't wake up till then. I <laughs> That's really good advice. <laughs> I'm gonna, I should try for that. I've been waking up at like 6 a.m. I have zero like sleep cycle right now just because it's between like staying up and like watching live sets or like talking with friends like this or streaming and yeah. then just also, you know, trying to figure out something to do every day. <laughs> right. So what's it been like working at the distillery right now? Is, so is there Normal day to day doing the sales is I drive, I cover everything for like, you know, most of Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and I drive around. I go to all the bars, I go to all the restaurants, I go to all the liquor stores. Well, obviously, you can't be going to bars, restaurants. Correct. And you can't really go inside the liquor stores right now. So it's been definitely a big shift on sort of what I've been doing for work. Yeah. I'm just, you know, making a couple phone calls a day, maybe a couple emails. Uh, we're actually going to start, uh, I'm gathering information right now from all of our different restaurants and all of our different uh, locations that we have our spirits in. And we're going to have like an online finder. So you can type oh, in cool. addresses and you'll be able to find what spirits, what stores. Uh, we're also going to start to push, uh, we do cocktail kits, which is really cool. Yeah. And we're going to have some of our restaurants that hold our spirits in the area. You know, we'll figure out whatever bartender has a cocktail using our stuff. We'll make the kit, sell it at the distillery, sell it at the bar. You can get your spirits and uh, good to go. That's so cool. So um, you can't buy liquor at restaurants right now. No. So at Deacon Giles. Yeah, so unfortunately right now with the liquor laws in Massachusetts anyways, uh, it's really cool. Some states have allowed for the off-premise sale of, of spirits, but in Massachusetts, it's still just beer and wine. Yeah. Uh, the dis like local distillers have been pushing for legislature to be changed to at least allow some of like the canned cocktails or right. you know uh, a, a spirit that's been bottled at a certain proof at a certain speed. Basically, you know, the state doesn't really want them selling whole fifths or, you know, big old, big old bottles of booze all yeah. day, which is why there's a limit on how much wine and how much beer you can buy. Um, oh, what's the limit? Do you know? uh, I don't know off the top of my head. I believe it's a couple bottles of wine, like, like two, like two bottles of wine, or it might be per order or like per food price or something okay. like that. So uh, kind of like if you were dining in. 
Basically, yeah. yeah. Like okay. you, you, you can't you can't really treat it like a packy and go and pick up, you know, four <laughs> pieces of light and you know, a bag of fries. That's not <laughs> some ravioli and a fifth of Jameson. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, it's you know, go to go to great go to great places like down by you, you know, where I used to live in Rosy. You've got stuff you've got um, you know, you can go to the you can go to the grotto and grab a bottle of wine, food, and then head home. Yeah. So. I think we're doing that next week. Is our plan? Do you do you know what you're gonna get for food? I miss I miss the, I miss I miss that place. <laughs> Tonight we're getting Chinese food, but okay. next Friday when we do takeout, I think we're doing the grotto. And uh, I okay, I don't know what my deal has been, um, but we have not been eating a lot of salad in this house right now. And they have this salad there that's just like arugula and cheese and tomato. Oh, it's just arugula and cheese. I think it froze a little bit there. Oh yeah, we got some freezing. It's told to just talk when it freezes. I don't know. It froze on my Facebook feed, which is nice. I don't know if I'm still talking on this. Oh yeah, I am. Look at that. <laughs> just wait for Katie to, for uh, Kelly to come back on. And uh, where are you going? Grotto is your plan, Sarah. What are you guys getting at the grotto? Are you guys going to get some uh, beer and wine? <laughs> this is, uh, hey, it's the Connor Show now. Just waiting uh, waiting for the stream to come back on. It's uh, another place that's doing uh, cocktail kits, actually. Uh, Mr. Kowloon over here. If you go to Kowloon's up in Saugus in the uh, North Shore, you can get Mai Tais to go, Scorpion kits to go, and uh, they basically give you all of the juice and uh, mixers, and you just go out and buy your booze, and you're on the way afterwards. Oh, we 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 have a we have video. Do we have the audio yet? Nope. We got nothing. <laughs> we got nothing. The anger is certainly there. Uh, good thing I can just talk. It's part of being a sales guy. I can just go on and on and on. I don't even have to talk about anything. I guess we'll be right back. She's saying, "Let's uh, let's hope let's hope that she can get some uh, good coverage." Let's see. Oh, Rioja for days. Absolutely. Um, gotta love the wine selections over at uh, Sophia's. Um, I don't know if the other spots are open in the square because we might still up over there to get some food. We have uh, we haven't gotten too many restaurant ones. I've just been doing a lot of cooking at the house. Oh, and, oh we're back. We're, I can hear you a little bit. Good. <laughs> I was running out of things to uh, talk about there for a second. Jesus. Yeah, uh, Kowloon's has been like they 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 started it off as like a trial, like got, got some mason jars sold out in like the first weekend, and scorpion now, bowls and stuff, right? Bowls of my ties, my ties, and they literally just got some mason jars to do it at first. Didn't realize like people would really want it, and they sold through their entire stock in the first weekend, and so now they had to go out and do it. Um, if you're not in the North Shore, another great spot that's doing it is Blossom Bar over in Brookline. Yeah. They're doing some high-end craft cocktails uh, in the Boston area. And then obviously up in Salem, uh, if you go to our website or check us out on our social media, we'll talk about different cocktails that we're doing every weekend for pickup. Uh, you can basically go online like requested from kits. You come in. It's a one-stop shop because we can give you your boo. Amazing. It's right there. Very exciting. We delivered a Rosalie. Uh, that might be in the works. There are some local stores, um, that we're hoping to get up online. Uh, for instance, in Rosendale, your closest store would probably be Blanchard's and JP. Yeah. It's over there. As All well right. as the West Roxbury location. That's so exciting. I've just been making cocktails at home, but, you know, they're not great. What you been <laughs> drinking? What's your cocktail to go? Um, so I've been switching out. I always, I'm a Manhattan girl, Maker's Mark Manhattan. Okay. Um, but I can't drink those every night. So I've been switching off between that and, um, gin and tonic. Last night I was drinking Fernet. Um. So if you like Fernet in Manhattan, have you gone down the Toronto lane? What is the Toronto Lane? Toronto is a Manhattan riff uh, that uses a rye and fernet, and I believe lemon, and there might be a third ingredient. I'm not sure, um, but yeah. It's called Toronto? 
Toronto. It's a it's right. it's it's a classic riff of a Manhattan, and it uses fernet and rye. So I believe you have the main ingredients. That sounds it, amazing. <laughs> it used to be one of my go-to uh, cocktails. Uh, I prefer actually uh, Branca Menta because I like the mintier style. Of yeah, that fernet. that's too much for me. Yeah, so I like that. Or there's a couple local ones that are uh, not local, but out of Colorado, they're Highland Tomorrows. It's a uh, I, can't, I forget the name of the distillery right now, but they make some really cool stuff. I have to get some Montenegro. So we've been doing liquor delivery, and like they have not had Montenegro. So um, I might venture out today. I was gonna say I would check. I would check one of the Blanchards. I don't know if you're. Yeah. I would say either the JP or the West Roxbury would probably have it. Um, I'm not sure if this. I'm not sure if this small spot uh, across from the down by Fornax. I don't think they would have it. Right. Just, they actually have had mezcal though, which I was surprised. Nice. Um, I'm like in, I'm into mezcal as far as agave spirits go. I don't really drink tequila or anything, but yeah, I I do dive into mezcal. There's uh, have you ever had a last word cocktail? So last word classic. Uh, you got equal parts of uh, Lux, Luxardo Maraschino liqueur. Love it. Uh, and green chartreuse. Oh, love both those things. That's it. So it's those three things. Sometimes you can add some citrus in there. Uh, really easy build. And then there's a flip of that variant where rather than gin, you use a mezcal. And you get these, like, smoky elements blending perfectly well with, like, the botanicals and the chartreuse. Yeah. Oh, wow. You're inspired. I love that this is Josh, do not Josh. drink the rubbing alcohol. <laughs> no, I know. I was... Josh, please don't make drinks with rubbing alcohol. <laughs> Um, so are there other changes that you've seen, that you've seen in the liquor industry right now? Like are sales so, up or down? Or? So it's a very interesting uh, time to be around. So we're in the craft spirits world, which is a little bit different than the craft beer world. Right. Uh, craft spirits is sort of always very heavily, uh, like on premise. So your restaurants, I'm normally doing a couple events a week. I'm normally doing, you know, maybe one event or having somebody else do an event at a, at a tasting at a liquor store. That's a couple bottles here and there. Right. Um, but where the fun is, is where I would normally do is at the restaurants with those not being opened. It's sort of on my end as my position is a little bit different. Uh, I know a lot of my friends that are just reps where you're doing your big orders for all the Bud Lights and all the beers and yeah, that it's still, you know, normal for them. Most of them have actually picked up a little bit uh, bigger distribution companies have a lot of their people that used to do the bars and restaurants now going and doing those stores. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of stores don't go, go through craft spirits at the same rate that you go through, yeah. you know, the teeth. You walk in, you're going to see a castle built of Tito's and it's going to be hundreds of cases. <laughs> and then if you go to the craft spirit section, you might see like one row of six of right. like a couple of spirits because it's just not, it's not economically sound for the stores to bring on a lot of product if they're not moving a lot of it. So it's really important in this time. And I, I made a Facebook post about it. If you're going to buy spirits, try to buy local. Yeah. Because um, I think they're bomb. But, you know, you've got Short Path. You've got Privateer. You've Love got Holy Boy. You've got Grand 10. You've got, even out in Connecticut, you've got Litchfield. You've got so many great distilleries in the area that you should really start to support those guys because that's what's going to help them survive this. Yeah. Tito's is going to survive it. Jack Daniels is going to survive it. Right. Captain have the money. Diageo's portfolio is in the billions. Uh, it doesn't matter for them. What's really going to affect those is the small distilleries. Same thing with the breweries. You know, don't grab a Bud Light. Don't grab a Claw. Don't grab any of those big brand names. Try to grab something that's locally made and you're supporting someone like myself guilty. who works in this industry. I'm so guilty. It's, I mean, I can't, I can't lie. You know, I, I, I've, I've had I might have had a claw earlier. Um, I mean, you know, there's no laws. <laughs> there's, there's no, there's no laws. You can't make it wrong. We do have some great canned cocktails, though, if you like those, uh, which they might have at the JP Blanchards. Oh, okay, good to know. Yeah. I, I like um, that hoop. The night, I think it's Night Shift is making seltzer. Yep, Night Shift is making seltzer. That's uh, bomb. It's the really hoot, good. Yeah, the hoot's good. So if you like the seltzers, we have a splash of crayon. It's a vodka soda crayon. You probably had them at uh, Sarah and Jimmy's wedding. Yeah, on the on the um, on the trolley. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So those kids. So those are pretty awesome because they come in four packs. It's only like eleven bucks for the four pack. 
but you're getting a full cocktail in the can. You're getting a vodka soda crayon or gin and tonic and, you know, who wants a full drink versus a claw any day? That's, oh, you're making me want to go to a liquor store. <laughs> it's sort of my job to get people excited. I, I know you're doing great. <laughs> I, have, I haven't been able to pitch anybody anything for so long because most work I'm doing now is basically just seeing what people need, seeing what people can, yeah. uh, you know, seeing what we can do for people. Cause it's not like we're planning for any events right now. It's not, right. it's not like we have any trivia nights or tap takeovers or tiki or tiki celebrations or yeah. new, new spring cocktail menus. There's nothing, there's nothing going on right now. Um, so it's really just oh, trying to get the spirits in front of people at the liquor stores. Yes. Um, what I, I'm going to, I'm going to shift topics, but first I'm wondering for myself, so I usually get Maker's Mark, I'm like brand loyal, but if I wanted to get a bourbon that I could get in a local liquor store right now, is there a brand or? Um, I mean, as far as local bourbons, there's a couple. Um, okay. Personally, uh, a bourbon I've been drinking a lot recently is uh, out of Texas. It's okay. A, it's a bourbon called Devil's River, I believe, or Devil's Creek. Oh. They've got a bourbon, they've got an overproof, and they have a rye. Okay. The, the bourbon is like $29, $30 for a fifth. Not bad. Uh, it's a okay. newer distillery. They've been around for like three years. They get their water source, uh, I believe it's in Austin, in um, in Austin, Texas, and they have their water source. It's like an untouched, filtered, naturally like stream. Oh, wow. It hasn't been dammed, hasn't been touched. Like it's a it's a really cool distillery if you look them up. I, I can't remember the name off the top of my head though. Okay. But Devil's River, Devil's Creek, something like that. Devil's River, Devil's Creek. I'll look it up because I wanna start, you know, I wanna support smaller distilleries that could really use the business right now. Maker's Mark will be there when this is all over. Exactly. And it's 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 things like that because a lot of the stores that are doing either the online orders or the takeout orders where you call in. Yeah. Um, you know, people go for the names that they remember. Right. You know, when when you're put on the spot, somebody's not going to remember that one thing they saw. Or a lot of our, a lot of the sales in the, in the craft spirits are from you know walking in, looking at the bottle, and being like, "Oh, I had this somewhere." Or, oh, yeah, yeah. This. And seeing either Salem or Boston or Ipswich or one of the towns that the distillery is based out of, people yeah, seem to get excited and they want to take it home. When you have people driving up, it's not like they're getting that same experience at the stores. Right. They're going, oh, what do I need? I need beer and I need vodka. And they yeah. go for Bud or they go for, you know, a, a local craft, hopefully, and something like that. It's yes. it's an uphill battle, but it's getting a little bit better, which is nice um, as more and more people are sort of staying home and trying to support their local uh, businesses as much as they can. And I think you guys are adapting awesomely. Like, what a, like that seems like a really great ad adaptation to the situation right now. Yep. We're going to be starting a program hopefully in the next uh, couple weeks where different bars that you might have our spirits at, um, you know, there's Hearth over in Needham, we've got Door Number 7 over in Wellesley, Our Fathers in Alston, <clears throat> we've got several bars, we've got you know, 300 different accounts in the, in the whole state together, wow. so start getting different bars and the bartenders there, we're going to have them make a drink using us, uh, whether we do that on a stream or just in a social media post. Love uh, it! <clears throat> Sorry, figure out some type of uh, Venmo uh, tip situation for the bartenders. Oh, and, that's awesome! And people would be able to either come up to the distillery and grab the cocktail kit to make that drink, or they could go, you know, to the bar itself if that place is open and grab the cocktail drink. That's freaking brilliant! I love it. I love yep. supporting our industry workers and, right now. Yeah, so we're gonna we be can. obviously if you go to the restaurant or bar, you're gonna have to go to an another liquor store to buy hopefully our product. Right. Um, the easiest thing will just be come up to Salem and get one of our cocktails to go. That uh, Rob, our uh, cocktail expert, has been whipping up some great stuff. It's a nice little day trip too. We'll drive. Yeah. Yeah. It's really easy to get up there, honestly, and especially right now there's no traffic. So no if traffic. you are if you are healthy, if you're not quarantining yourself, and you are looking. Yes. You're going a little stir crazy. If you hop in your car and drive up by yourself, it's total no contact. Um, it's it's very easy and safe to do in this time. And I just love Salem. It's such a great little look. town. I have around and look at everything for a little bit. I want to move there, but someday. Um, so I'm going to switch a little bit. So you've been mostly at home. Yep. And you basically. live with EMTs. 
Yeah, so my uh, my my girlfriend works for the city of Boston. She's on her shift right now, and then uh, same thing with one of my roommate who works for uh, Pro EMS up in Cambridge. So once uh, EMS, it's like Cambridge's EM, EMT yeah. service. Like Boston has like the city of Boston. Yeah. Company to do it. What has that been like? So I mean, they both see it on a daily basis. You know. Luckily, um, you know, when they are on their calls, they're like fully covered and I'll get like the Snapchat of Katie with, and it's the mask, it's the visor, it's yeah. the full head to toe suit, the glove, it's, they're fully covered. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's nice because for someone who's going to be in contact with it, but then you have situations like my buddy Nick was working the other day and they ran out of, you know, some, I think it was gloves or something or one of their PPEs at one point. And uh, had to have another truck, you know, go out, go to go to the dispatch area, pick up more supplies, bring them back. Wow. And, yeah, and then That's I know so Katie. Scary. Yeah, I mean they, it's it's what they do, and they're you know they're my they're my fucking heroes for doing it. They're but my heroes too. It's it's something that it, it's it's upsetting for them to see so many people not taking it seriously. Um, you know, yeah. the fact is. The other day when it was nice, I uh, recently got a new storage unit. So I was going to my storage unit to grab some stuff and we drive by the Arboretum. And there was people in groups of, you know, five, ten, yeah. you know, walking together, yeah. doing plot. And it's – that is why we're still in lockdown and why this has been progressing. And if people would just – it's not that you can't go outside, but if you're going to go outside, it's you and the person you live with. Yeah. It's yeah. – if it's you and a friend, you're – six plus feet away you're not hugging you're not shaking hands you're not touching you're you're right. doing what you and you and sarah do having the the beers on the yeah. porch <laughs> it's, lucky i have a couple walking it's, more than six feet away. it's like 12 feet <laughs> yeah. and i'm lucky enough i'm lucky enough i have a i have a house that you know we have walking trails over by us so i'll have somebody come over and it's all right i'm at the house and then we walk out and we walk down the street and walk on the trails yeah and it's it's something where you can still go outside and you can still see some of those people. Um, obviously, those are people that are not at risk. It sucks right now because when I first stopped working, I was like, oh, you know, maybe I could go up to Vermont, see some of my family, yeah. you know, see my mother, maybe go to New York, all that. And you can't even do that because those are the people you want to keep even safer. And I like it. That's sort of the thing that hits the hardest is I've seen a couple of my friends, you know, in the past yeah. in the past month, I've probably seen six friends. And it's been one person, two people at most, where we yeah. stand awkwardly away from each other. <laughs> Same. And uh, I've been getting videos from my little brother up in New York. He has, uh, they sit in lawn chairs in people's driveways with badminton rackets. <laughs> Just. <laughs> That's good. I mean. That each other. It's what you got to do. But, you know, it's the people that aren't taking this seriously enough that. You know, it's sort of a slap in the face to people like Katie and Nick who work in the in the front in the front lines. Um, right. They're the ones that are seeing it, and they have to go out and interact with these people, and they're taking every precaution to cover themselves head to toe. Yeah. What's not helping that is, you know, the the group of ten people that decide to go for like a group run or a group hike somewhere or hang out or place or play some type of physical sport. That doesn't help. What doesn't help is the people that are wearing the gloves and masks in their cars and then walking around and touching their cell phones and touching the, the, the handle to the store. And it's, it's the cross contamination. If you just wash your hands, if you just I wash know. your hands, you're fine. But these, these people that are walking around with, with dirty materials and then they're throwing them on the ground and causing an even worse problem. It's don't throw your gloves on the no. goddamn ground. That makes me so mad. People are stupid. It's, it's gross. Uh, I see it working in the bar industry all the time. I'm sure you've seen it all the time. Um, you know, Katie and them definitely see it because people make stupid, stupid people mistakes. Are stupid. <laughs> no, um, so because Chris and I both have worked in kitchens for years and years and years, we have this like running thing that we do when we go out, which is very <clears throat> infrequently, but we call it uh, a plate up. So when you cook, if you do catering, you have a large dinner, maybe you've been to it like a wedding and you, you know, you sit at the table and everyone gets it's a plate up. So okay. you are not allowed to get fingerprints on the plates during a plate up. So you have to wear multiple layers of gloves and you'll change them as they get dirty. So you don't screw up the plates. 
So we haven't been wearing, I don't think we've, we've been wearing maybe like three layers, but we've been treating like the contact as Play-Doh when yep. we're out in the world. And it's yeah. been working for us, but we're not throwing our gloves on the ground. Gross, yeah. stop it. Yep. And I mean, that's the thing. It's it's simple, safe practices. You know, I I go to Wegmans once a week to do my grocery shopping. Yeah. Um, and they have everyone waiting outside to sort of stagger when you come in. But it's, you know, I drive there alone in my car. And, you know, I've washed my hands before I left my house. And then I get to Wegmans and they have little wipes that you can wipe down yeah. the, the bar on the on the cart with. Wipe that down. Boom. That sanitized. My hands are going on that. I'm staying six feet behind people in the store. I go in. When you're doing your shopping, and it's been nice because I've noticed people have been conscious of it ever since this started. But you don't see people, like, rifling through stuff. Stuff isn't in the wrong order because right. now when you go shopping, you have to understand every time you're touching – you're risking somebody else on a cross contamination exactly. as well. So it's, you know, you do your shopping. Oh, I want that bag of that, whatever item you can grab that, put that in your car, finish your shopping. I do the contactless Wegmans app where you can literally just scan it. And so oh, I walk that's out. Awesome. Now all I'm doing is I'm putting my card in a reader card, going back into my wallet. When I get into my car, I do a hand sanitizer, you know, real quick, get home, basically the same thing. It's if you keep these steps, you know, it's easy. If I do we have our frontline workers. Yep, exactly. You know, if you, if you, I do have, I, I've had one or two people over at my house and it's to come in and grab something where I've sanitized the knobs and the switches and anything they're going to yep. touch. And then they come in and then they leave and I do the same thing. Yep. It's so protecting have, me, it's protecting them. My mother-in-law's boyfriend doesn't live with us, but he's the family. So he's coming in and out and, you know, just sanitize everything and shoes come off yep they so both of them um you know they'll take oh yeah their, they must have a whole process right yep so you know obviously they're wearing their uniforms and then they're covered in the, the hazmat suit essentially during the day when they get off of work um you know they'll they'll come back and they'll leave their uh you know boots out in their car changing the yeah. sneakers come into the house and then you know pretty much it's it's immediately closing the hamper and showering it's yeah it's we've been not, doing that for the supermarket yep it's it's pretty much that we were, uh, you know, you you can if it's if it's a bad situation like they do have like showers and equipment at the first responders like most most of their stations for like long shifts and stuff like that. Uh, but obviously, you don't really need to use that unless you're coming in direct contact. Right. It's 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 sort of sad. A lot of her a lot of their coworkers in the first responding field have been either living away from home during this or they sent their children away or ones that live with their parents or elderlies or people that are at risk. And, you know, it's, it's lucky enough. It's just, it's me, Katie and Nick, you know, yeah. where the two of them are getting exposed anyways, me sanitizing everything in between. It's not going going anywhere. You're doing um, your part. I'll do our part. We'll get through it. It's people that aren't taking it seriously, which is going to make it worse. Yeah. And I don't know what to do about it except just take it seriously myself, but Oh, I get so mad. Oh, when I went to the supermarket the other day, I wanted to fight people. <laughs> did you throw down? I I did. I will say, I don't want to, like, rat out the supermarket that I was at because, like, those are people's jobs, and I don't want anyone getting in trouble or anything like that. But the local supermarket that I went to in the area, uh, yep. I stomped my feet at this guy. <laughs> I'm trying to remain six feet and I've got my gloves and my mask and covered boots, everything. I'm just like covered. <laughs> and this guy just decides that now's the time to touch everything in the Easter aisle. Well, I'm just trying to pass him. And he's like got his car on one side of the aisle and he's taking up the whole other side of the aisle, like touching every Easter candy thing. Like, he'd never seen Easter candy before. No. So I was like, okay, I'm just chill, chill, be patient. <laughs> you have, you're in no rush. You're in no rush. I'm, like, sitting there and sitting there. And he's, like, looking at the bunnies. And I just went, like, oh, and I swung my cart around and I marched down the aisle and it made me feel better. But I don't think he cared. <laughs> and, 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 unfortunately, that's the thing. People don't care. Um and it's it's selfish when they do shit like that. Um, I wanted to throw a chocolate bunny at his head, though. Like, come on, dude. I haven't seen uh, 
I haven't seen it at Wegmans when I've been going. My friend was at a stop and shop. I don't know where it was the other day. And they actually now have, it's a, not only single file and they're doing the waiting to get in, yeah. but there's arrows on the floor and it's one pass. You just, you literally snake through every aisle and that's it. And then you, and then you walk out the store. That's I'm awesome. sorry. I, well, it's awesome. It's, I mean, no, it's not awesome. That's I shop so like. I shop so absentmindedly when I go out. I'm like, oh, what do I want for dinner? Oh, I'll get this and I'll get this and I'll get that. And I need snack stuff and lunch stuff. And I have been doing a lot of cooking and unfortunately a lot of eating. Um, okay. But <laughs> it's I'm like, oh man, if that's gonna get to it, I'm gonna have to plan before I go grocery shopping, which is just not something I normally do. Oh, I once you get used to it, you won't go back. I'm a very I. Have I have our meals planned in this house until May 4th. Yep. May the 4th be with you. <laughs> and um, I just make the list according to what I need for that. And bing, bang, boom. I don't squeeze the damn avocados. Stop squeezing the avocados, guys. Just grab them. It'll get ripe. Like, don't do It'll that right in a now. day. It'll get ripe in a day, and then two minutes later, it's gone. So I, wanted it's- to, I wanted to yell at this person just like, Oh, oh. And I'm like, yeah, now's the time for you to touch every avocado. Please take your time and contaminate everything while you're at it. Ugh. Supermarket is a touchy subject for me. But anyway, I want to thank the EMTs for just dealing with all these Idiots. people and all this stuff right now. And their, their lives have definitely changed. Are they working more or the same? More. Definitely more. Um, it sucks. And it's because of the sanitation they're going through, calls last a lot longer as well. Um, you know, it's not just a simple cleaning of, you know, the bed in the area that the patient was in the back of the truck now. Right. It's a full sanitization of yeah. everything and disinfecting every little nook and cranny and airspace and reapplying all of your PPE to make sure that you're going clean into your next call. With right. somebody that may or may not be dealing with the COVID right now. And it's, it's just a piggyback of people that just don't understand and just won't stay home. Right. And if they would, you know, it's going to get bad. You know, I think they said we're looking at the 18th is going to be like the peak for this area, April 18th. Yeah, like next week, I think. Um. But like, you know, if we stay inside, Maybe, hopefully, we can start going back to bars and patios, and it's going to be different going out, going outside and doing stuff, but yeah. the quicker people take this seriously and stop doing stuff that's not essential or getting together in groups or, you know, this will, this will pass. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. And stop throwing your gloves on the ground. Oh, my God, that makes me so mad. So you have a lot going on, right? And I've been asking all of the people who join me on this broadcast what they've been doing for their mental health and wellness because um, everyone has different yeah. ways of coping. I'm a, I'm a very social person. Um, yes, you know, my job, you are. <laughs> all day is going in and out of places and talking with people. Um, and then outside of work, I do a lot of like shows and festivals and music events and, you know, tours and stuff like that. Um, but for me, keeping all this, I talk to my friends a couple times a day. I'll try to get out, go outside at least once a day and go for a walk in the neighborhood or hit some of the trails. And I'll just throw my Bluetooth on and go down the call list. You know, how's this person? How's that person? Call a couple friends, stay in contact. Uh, there's been a lot of live streams on at night. So we'll do like streaming where we'll have, you know, four or five friends on the same screen. You'll all be watching the thing. It's not like you're there, right? but you can still sort of experience things together and talk and it's it's the best you can do hanging out with your friends that you can't physically see i've never been to an edm show so i don't even know what Ooh, girl. i'm gonna take you on oh when, my uh, god I I have, i'll take you to something good no it's uh so i mean i've been going to shows for years and i i normally go to about one or one or two a week sometimes more what? Uh, oh my god Austin's got some great venues. Uh, my, one of my favorites is Middle East. It's been there forever up in Cambridge. They have yeah. five, all have their own vibe. Uh, there's some great sound system quality that gets put down there by like the Hennessy sound guys all the time. Uh, and then, you know, there's Wonder Bar, and then you've got the big production stuff. You've got the Big Night Live, the Grand, Mar- uh, Memoir. Those are some amazing. Never been to any of those. <laughs> uh, big Night Live is really cool. Have you been down to anything at the 
Causeway, the hub on Causeway. It's where Banners is. It's where Guy Fieri's Taco Spot is. No, nope. it's it's at North Station. I've seen it, like, and I've been like, oh wow. But no, I I am. Um, I don't know what I've been doing before this. I I don't go to a lot. I go to some concerts. I don't go to a lot of concerts, but what was the last like concert you went to? You think? Oh, sugar. Oh my gosh. I don't know. Oh. Well, I have all these, I had tickets to all these concerts this year that I was so excited about, but that's not happening. Um, what the heck was the last show I went to? I don't know. Oh my gosh, this is going to bug me. I'll get back to it. What was the last show you went to? Peekaboo and Zeke Beats at the Downstairs Middle East. That was the weekend that they started doing shutdowns. Oh, yeah. Um, like it was, I think it was like three days later was when they was when they shut th- stuff down. The last show to play in Boston, I think, was a Valentino Con show. Um, that was like the last. Damn. Yep. And like I had friends who were like, "Oh, we're gonna go out. Like it might be one of the last shows." And we're like, oh, "I don't know if stuff's shutting down. They haven't made announcements. There's only been like 10, 10 12 cases. It's fine." And then all of a sudden, it was like. Not fine. I, mean, we, I had I had tickets that I had paid hundreds of dollars for that all of a sudden I'm getting refunds for. Shows that, like I paid for meet and greets with with uh, one of the one of the things artists are doing is you pay for a meet and greet package, so you get to like hang out and meet the artist before the show. That's and so cool. we paid for this one to see this DJ who I've never met, I've like seen live like a dozen times, and really wanted to like meet for the first time. And of course, it was canceled because it was in April. Um, I've had a lot of festivals moved around, uh, uh, electric forest, Michigan. It's like one of like the biggest yeah, I have friends that go to that every year. So they just canceled it. Oh, it's supposed to be, I wanted to go for so long. And this is going to be my first year to get tickets alone. You have like 300,000 people trying to buy a hundred thousand tickets and it's, or whatever the number is, it's, it's much more people trying. You're on a waiting list. Yeah. Like, the second with a pre-sale code. So I actually got tickets here. Me and all my friends got tickets. Oh. Was like we had, we all set calendars and like sat there on laptops to get tickets for this event. Same thing awesome. I did a similar thing for my chemical room. <laughs> I don't know if that show is going to happen now though. Yep. So I don't have tickets to my chemical romance, but Katie and a bunch of our other friends do. Um, I really needed it. <laughs> yep. Yep. And like I, we were looking forward to electric forest and they actually voted yesterday in the town the they were looking to change it from uh may or no change it from june to september yeah and the town didn't allow them to change it so they're not going to have it now and there's a lot of places that are doing that with like big festivals where they're either canceling it doing refunds or they're moving it to the following year like they did with boston calling um where they're just going to propose i want my refund though Dang it. From um, there's ones like Red Rocks actually was supposed to have a show this month. A bunch of my friends are going to. Uh, it was Ganja White Night was the name of the DJs. And basically they moved it to November. So rather than having like an awesome sum, summer springtime show in April in right. Colorado, Red Rocks, now it's going to be the middle of November. Like Honestly, people will probably just be so damn grateful to be us. <laughs> At something like yeah, outside. And it's, what's the big? What's the big one in like Europe? Because I have a whole group of friends that were planning this like trip. Tomorrowland. Yeah, they were all planning to go to that. I don't know if that's still happening, but so the the government in uh, Belgium, I believe, or wherever wherever it is, yeah, I think I think or, yeah, it's Belgium. Uh, said that they're not. They're looking to cancel it or move it because it's just it's so many people traveling internationally coming in. Um, there was right, a, you know, it's, it's a bad idea. <laughs> yeah. Um, and they're canceling stuff as far out as like the end of summer right now and moving things around. I have, as of right now, um, you know, they may or may not get moved. I have a festival electric uh, zoo in New York city that is in September. And then I have one that's a camping festival in Ohio. That's also in September. Uh, they, they haven't started moving too many of the fall dates yet. Yeah. Uh, we haven't heard anything about my chemical romance. But. Yeah. Yeah, and it's hopefully I'll be able to attend at least at least one of those, if not both of those. I have tickets for everything. Um, I got tickets to Boston Calling, um, Big Frida and Kesha. 
Ooh, I've seen Big Freedom before. That's a good show. Big Freedom I've seen three or four times. I'm a very, very big fan, and I do love to twerk. Um, <laughs> that's for another show, not the lockdown. <laughs> Um, I had tickets to Green Day and Weezer, mm -hmm. um, and Fall Out Boy at Fenway, mm -hmm. and I was planning on getting tickets to see Lady Gaga. Um, Are you going to watch her streaming uh, special she's doing? Yes. <laughs> so I was react. I was actually reading up on it last night. She's raised over thirty-five million dollars. Good for her. She is. Even until the 18th, and they're already at $35 million of donations for it's One World or COVID, whatever. Yeah. It's I forget. She's amazing. Like, I, I, I've gone, I've seen a lot of shows. I've gone to a lot of shows, and I saw her at Fenway Park. And I have ne I've never, ever seen anyone put on a show like that. Like, she dances her ass off while singing and playing instruments. And changing costumes, like she's incredible. I don't, I'm a big fan. <laughs> big fan, heard. And then, um, oh, I remember what the last concert I went to was. I saw Hobo Johnson at um, Ooh. House of I've, Blues. I've listened to his music. I've never, I've never seen him live before. It was so good. I mean, yeah. I he was he's playing again this summer. He was supposed to. But I was going to get tickets, but I don't think that's going to be happening. But um, so do you have any recommendations for people watching at home if they want, um, to see some of these live streams? Are there any spots to find them or there's, so there's, there's a lot of different, um, sort of platforms people are using. Uh, Twitch is a popular one that is originally for, uh, basically people who play video games live. That yeah. They can like play with their friends and talk and, or if they're trying to figure out different missions, what it's evolved to is just a streaming service in general. Um, so you have DJs that'll set up live, uh, you know, recordings either in their studio or at their house with their mixers and they'll, you know, throw it in. Some might have a green screen and do some funny shit. Some might just have it in their basement or studio. Yeah. Um, I've also seen some live performances where it's just somebody playing, you know, a musical instrument themselves. Uh, that's on Twitch. You've got YouTube live, Instagram live, Facebook live. There's a lot of different streaming services out there. They all sort of have their own niche as far as what to listen to. If you go on your Facebook and just type in stream, there's so many. I mean, I was just on a page. There's 35 different live streams for Friday and Saturday this week. Wow, you're busy. <laughs> That's just the streams. Um, each stream can be as much as, you know, a dozen artists or more. Because yeah. some, of, some of them might go, you know, there might be a DJ set stream where there's 20-minute sets. There might be ones where there's four-hour sets. You know, oh, last night we watched time. the DJ set. It was a two-hour set. And he had a live drummer going the whole time, and he was DJing the whole time. So uh, even, like, listen when you listen, I don't know, what, you've been doing your rave thing? Like, I, rave thing? I don't know. EDM, <laughs> I, 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 like, have lots of friends who are in the EDM scene and go to shows, and, like, it's a different life style it, in their everyday it, life. It's funny. So we have... We have like a TV. In, we have a TV in our uh, TV room uh, where I'm sitting right now on the couch. And then we actually just got like a smaller TV and put that in front of that. And then I have a projector, so we'll have that plus laptops. So there's like five different streams, and you That's can switch awesome. which, which ones you want to listen to at the time. You know, put it through the sound bar so the sound quality is good on it. And like I said, like we'll have friends come over. We'll not. We'll have friends come over, but like we'll have friends on the screen, and then maybe like one person at the house. And everyone has like their own streaming devices with everyone's faces on it, and everyone's watching. <laughs> we have like we'll have like LED strips that we have on the walls, and like little like uh, you know lights that do the patterns on the walls. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. And I'll be I'll be sitting here I'll be sitting here alone with that going on, talking to like five different friends on the side, and Nick or Katie will get off a shift and they're just like, "What's going on?" It's like, oh, it's <laughs> It's 3 p.m. Oh, well, it's 9 p.m. where I'm watching it. And it's so many different time zones. You'll watch these DJs play anywhere from like noon yeah. to four in the morning. Cause they're all playing around the world like as the as their day goes on. That sounds so fun. Cool. And a lot of them, a lot of them are doing 
The bigger ones where obviously the artists are good and they don't need the money are doing donation drives where when you're watching it, there'll be a cash app or a Venmo or a payment where you can raise money. And there's a couple ones, uh, Digital Mirage raised a couple hundred thousand dollars over the course of the weekend. Wow. And then there's ones where it's local DJs. Uh, there's these uh, uh, deep, dark and dangerous quarantine sessions that are really good on Twitch. Okay. And it's got like a bunch of local DJs that play there where you can donate directly to the artist, or you can donate directly to a cause. Um, That's great. I'm so glad. That's so creative too. Like, and, and you've seen so much change in before all of this happened, there's maybe three or four DJs that had some stream sessions where once a week they would do a record live or they would go through one of their new albums and they'd talk to fans and they'd have people send yeah. themselves and do live critiques. And that was maybe a handful. My Twitch stream alone is like, 30 different streams of just DJs and it's just everyone's sort of learning as they go. And you'll see one artist where it's a green screen. That's definitely like crooked. Cause you can yeah. see <laughs> on this side and there's battery flashing on the, on the computer. That's how I feel with this. <laughs> stuff cuts out, stuff comes in. And then other guys, you know, people that know how to do it and have been doing it for a while. This guy had a stream the other day. He's DJing on his roof, you know, somewhere on the coast. Cause there's, uh, palm trees and it's an ocean that's line so dope. and then all of a sudden it switches to like a drone that's just like flying around his DJ booth and it's like <laughs> oh this guy's done this before he knows how to properly do this there's people that like sit there and the, the audio cuts out and they're like yeah. <laughs> don't realize, they, don't, yeah, they don't realize it and all of a sudden you'll watch the conversation screen on the happen on the, on the side and it'll just It'll be flying through people like can't hear you, can't hear you, can't hear you. <laughs> Ten minutes later, you'll see the DJ like, oh, oh no, can you hear me? I was watching the um the state. It was like the state of Black America for um the COVID nineteen last night. Um that P Diddy did, or I don't even know. Oh no, I saw you post about that. So yeah, what that? it was live. And uh, okay. Chris and I cast it to the TV to watch it. And, like, there is, like, super high-profile people on there talking about how this um, is affecting black and brown communities. Um, everyone should go watch that. The link's in my profile. But the side yeah. note of what you were saying is <laughs> to see these people who, like, who are just, like, struggling with a Zoom. <laughs> like... <laughs> Killer Mike like dropped his phone at one point. Like you couldn't, you like you couldn't like. They were all like interrupting each other. People were on mute, and they were like, "Oh, you're on mute." But yeah, I don't. It was it. It added like a sense of like together. And it, like we we've all been going through this whole digital hell scape yep. together. People that know people that knew how to do it quick could go through it very easily. People that, yeah. that didn't and have and are having issues, it's it's issues. Um, right. I, I'm and not, I'm not making fun of anyone who's learning right now. We're all learning. We're all learning. We're all learning. It just uh, added a, it added um it made them seem more human. They were talking about very like, you know, heavy topics and stuff, but then like their mic would be on mute. I don't know. It was just it it felt nice. To yeah. And so that that's happened a lot, sort of, with the live streams of the DJs. It's these it's these DJs that I've seen at concerts with, you know, sixty thousand people, right. and you're watching this guy like in his studio, like, hold up, like, <laughs> like, like on the it's uh, uh, <laughs> you're you're seeing like stuff move around, or like mics not work. You're seeing them like play something because it's also you know when you're when you're doing a DJ set. There's different ways of hooking that into the streaming with the right. music. So like, it might be on the wrong channel. So what they're hearing in their headphones, there there was a guy playing last there was a guy playing last night from Zed's Dead. And he it was probably two minutes, no music. But he has his headphones and he's like, he's DJing. Because <laughs> he's hearing something completely different. And it's not these guys that are not experienced as DJs, it's people that have been doing it for decades. Right. Or this is a whole new but they've never they've never had to like cross they've never had to set up their own their own like stuff into a live stream. Right. 
you know, they know how to set up, they can set up their equipment and help, but most of the time that's the AV guys, that's the guys doing the sound wars. There's very there's very, few, very few artists that can sort of go A to B and like set up everything and do all that. It took you know. me it took me three three, four days to like get all this situated even. And I'm someone who works in social media like my job, part of my job is social media, and uh, it's just a whole other la- layer of stuff that you realize you don't know. Yeah. Uh, so I've been learning a lot. Um, do you, uh, what do you drink while you're watching these live streams? Do you have any drink recommendations since it is Friday and we're nearing the end of our uh, lunch date? You know, I like to keep it simple. Uh, I'm a big daiquiri fan. I had a couple bottles of uh, the Deacon rum lying around, and I had gone grocery shopping right before the other week, uh, right before the weekend. So I had fresh raspberries, okay. uh, muddled up those raspberries, uh, threw a little lime in there, some simple and rum, just a you know variation on a classic daiquiri. That sounds fun. Yep, uh, that was really good. Uh, I'm trying to think what else I've been drinking. Uh, yeah, drinking Deacon. I'm drinking gin and tonic in a can drinking when it's Deacon. easy. Yeah, drinking Deacon. It's gin and tonic in a can. You know, the other night it was co- it was cold and rainy, so I made a hot toddy. Uh, oh, I haven't had one of those yet during all this. Yeah, no hot hot cider drinks, hot toddies. Those are the way to go. Um, you know, sipping on some uh, had some what I had. I was drinking some Pipeworks the other day. I forget which one it was. Beer. Yep. Uh, last night had some of the Maple Nipple by Lawson's. Have you had that? No, I love Lawson's Sunshine though. So it's. Also, that's the best name ever. It's it's literally Maple Nipple. It's a maple uh, red ale, I think. I really it. good. Yeah, All really right, good. Um, uh, that that one's good. And um, I'm trying to think, I got like a mix. I got a mix pack of uh, the Lord Hobo that had the Angelica, the Boomstop, yes. the Tenio, Like it was. The I'm obsessed pack. with that mix pack. Yep. Yeah. So I got that one. <laughs> That's a good one. So everyone who is on this broadcast gets to have the final say. So this is your opportunity, Connor, to tell a joke, vent, get stuff off your chest, give tips, tricks, uh, say inspiring words, and I shut the heck up. And I wear a fancy new pair of sunglasses that no one's seen every time. So the floor Ooh. is yours. I like those. Those are good. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, I've pretty much gotten most off my chest. I had to, I had to you know, freestyle a little bit when we had some tech in, in, uh, some technical difficulties. So I think I said most of the things I wanted. Uh, you know, if you're out there, try to keep sane. Try to talk to friends, stream, get on the phone, send stupid Snapchat filters, um, you know, read a book, go outside. Sit around if you can uh, with distancing. Keep that in mind. If you're going to go out, you know, I treat my house like it's my, it's, I know it's sanitized because I've cleaned it so many damn times. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, treat the outside world like it's dirty. You know, you go outside, clean before you come back inside. And, you know, it's the little steps like that. If you do it, it's not that bad. Is it frustrating at times? Yes. Do I wish I could be outside to do my job? most of us do you know don't treat it like like a vacation try to you know get a new skill try to like i did i i've been trying to switch my storage unit for three years and i finally knew that i could take a day off go to my storage unit empty it and bring it to somewhere close where i'm saving a hundred dollars but like do something like that we can all figure out something that we can do that either is just by ourselves or with the people that we're living with that's really the only people we should interact with act with uh, the couple friends I have seen that I talked about are friends that we were hanging out for three days straight during all of this stuff at the beginning. And it's people that are not living with, you know, people that are at high risk, the elderly, children, you know, et cetera, et cetera. If you're, if you're healthy and you're taking these extra precautions, you should stay healthy. That's, that's, what, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Those are some wise words, Mr. Connor. Thank you so much.
for joining us today and for all your amazing tips. Um, I will make sure that some of your drink recommendations make it on to my, I'm setting up the YouTube this weekend with all the past. The YouTube. So, yeah, I mean, I need the place, I need the videos to live somewhere. So I'm going to set up YouTube and then any resources or recommendations people make will be in the uh, body of the YouTube. Yeah. Um, so and, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm teaching myself YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you everyone who has been watching um, since the beginning and thank you if you're new and you're here today and thank you if you're watching this later, whatever that is. Uh, on the weekend, I rest, supposedly. So there are no shows on the weekend. Um, but next week we have some awesome, awesome people. Um, we have City Councilor at Large, Julia Mejia, um, Deborah Fritter, Caitlin Sheehan, who's a frontline worker at a Brigham and Women's, Samantha Montano uh, in Jamaica Plain, and Leslie Reed, my boss. <laughs> um, that shouldn't be stressful week, at all. Next week's going to be really fun and informative, and he, we get to hear more stories of people's lockdown experiences. I am so grateful to share these stories with everyone and have this platform um, and the privilege to use it. Um, I'm Really grateful for all of you. And I can't thank you enough. Thank you, Connor, again. Thank you to Katie and what's his name? Nick? Yep. Katie and Nick, thank <laughs> you so much. You're my heroes for being on the front lines as EMTs. They are um, awesome. Everyone, I want you to have a drink tonight if you like. Uh, it doesn't have to have alcohol in it. Just make yourself a nice beverage. Um, and have a great weekend. Um, stay home. Wash your hands. I will see you next week. Stay safe. Mwah.